for the third time. I can't seem to get the video started without getting interrupted today. If you hear the music, it's the radio stations and the original artists own it. I do not own the rights to any music. Please don't sue me. I'm just a fan. Okay. I'm doing a lot of painting and wreaths and stuff because I'm trying to get ready for a there's going to be what my town's calling a drive-in June 11th and 12th in St. Clair, Missouri. And uh, there are going to be a whole bunch of old cars, live music, games, vendors, and it's a two day long thing. And I've got a free spot since my friend's shop is on private property, but at the front there where I can set out a booth, he's going to let me use his space, his patio, tables, I've got six tables plus my own two if I grab one from my mother, which reminds me I gotta talk to her about that. So I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff done up. I would love to turn this into a business that I could at least part time have, you know, cause this is fun for me. But anyway, I digress. I found a few fun things in my stores. Uh, in my stash of stuff. I can't wait to have a house where I can organize my craft stuff. I like having my office and craft room together, but I like having both of them organized. And in a one bedroom senior apartment with a hundred and something pound dog, that's very difficult. But look what I found. It's five o'clock somewhere. That's what that says. But, and I might need to darken those letters. This also, so I'm gonna turn it into a wreath. So the first step when you pick up something like this, it usually has a tie or something and these little holes. Right there, right there's the hole. Uh, cut the tie off and grab your wreath form and some zip ties. Cause you don't always have to glue something down. Sometimes it's gonna be better to start with a zip tie. These don't have to, you can use smaller zip ties. Where's my bag? My mom raided my grandpa's supply of zip ties that have been uh, not used since he died almost eight years ago. So I asked her, can I have them? She says, you're welcome to them. So, and these are smaller, so we're gonna use these. Let's grab it to a couple of these green ones. They're kind of small. As you can see, I've got bigger ones in case I need them, but I've got a ton of these green small ones. I'm doing laundry in the background, got some music playing. It's a gorgeous day outside, some blue ones. So we're gonna put these out. Now, before you get ready to do something like this, I'm gonna show you my workspace and you're gonna say, how are you gonna do anything in that workspace? Cause I'm telling you, it's disorganized looking. See that? Um, See that? That's disorganized looking. But to me, yes, it's disorganized. Does it drive me crazy? Absolutely. But also, it's organized after a fashion. Because I've got my flowers out. I've got, I want to use this little gnome guy for a wreath. I've got flowers. I've got paints if I decide to paint. And I've got some things for different kinds of wreaths all stacked here with glue sticks. So kind of organize your space in a way that makes sense to you. Put your glue sticks away from your glue gun. Yes, I said away from your glue gun. Because, and I like to stick them in this container. I've got over to the side sticking up. Sticking up so I can grab more because I left glue sticks by my glue gun before and I left my glue gun on without thinking and well, I melted the glue sticks. When you're done with a project, be sure you turn your glue gun off or unplug it. I will admit to my boo-boo, I came over here to plug in my glue gun to get started and it was still plugged in. I forgot and left it plugged in last night, oops. Okay, that's not good. Thankfully, this one has some kind of shut off mechanism that I didn't know about, but my friend told me that that's why he picked out this glue gun. So I'm glad that my friends were thinking of me uh, and knew how scatterbrained I can be without me thinking of it. It helps. Now, when you are tying these, uh, fixing, uh, fixing this with zip ties, 
be aware if you got hold on if you've got a wagon wheel like this one if you put it here it's going to slide up and down if you put it here it's going to move side to side but that's better than having it slide up and down your wreath so you can even cross member it right at the juncture and it will stay uh, you can also secure it with hot glue on the back and zip ties double secure it i do that a lot so it depends on how you want this where you want it to be if you're going to use the zip ties at all or not you could even go through the center hole here and uh, secure it some, you know, if you have a way to drill another hole, that would work great, but I don't have a drill. All I want for Christmas is a screwdriver and a drill. I want some power tools. I told my mom I want an electric screwdriver for Christmas or a good mixer. But now that I've got my dough hook, I don't need the mixer. All right, ratchet it down and then cut this piece off. And I'll give you another tip about these. This piece, if you need to lengthen one of these, you can take a piece you've cut off and put it in the thing, especially, well, not a piece you've cut off, but another zip tie and lengthen it by putting one in the other like that. I'm not gonna do it because then I can't get it out. I use these to kind of dab the hot glue so that I don't burn my fingers. <laughs> and I've got a green one here. Now the green, I like the green ones because there's green in this sign. So if they catch sight of the um, zip tie, that's fine but I'm going to do a happy, uh, fun wreath this today. Uh, I know that my friend, one of my friends is gonna want to either buy this one or the next one, which is gonna be a gnome wreath because she likes that kind of stuff. So now we've got it secured and it'll be fine on your wreath form. So you don't have to worry about it gluing it down if you don't want to. Now, before you go haphazardly gluing down things, I found recently that it's m more productive to kind of sit here and try to think out a pattern, unless you don't want a pattern. If you purposely don't want a pattern, then don't have a pattern. You know, that, that's completely up to you. I'm thinking out. I'm thinking about my little gnome here. I was thinking about putting him right below the sign and zip tying him at the base. I can cover the base up by a flower or something so that he's secure. I don't know if this is gonna work. So I'm using, uh, I'm, I'm be, you know, be aware that you might be misusing some products that you may not be, you know, if you're low on zip ties or, you know, I only have one of these little gnomies. So if you don't do that, if you think that it won't work and you're going to waste something you don't have to waste, see what I'm saying? But now before I cut him free, look, we got him secured. He's below the sign. You could put some hot glue on the back if you wanted, but I think he's fine right there. So I will have to cover up this black zip tie on the bottom. I'll figure out something for that. I don't, like, I know of someone who graphs out her designs. I'm not that, I'm not that good at thinking ahead and that kind of stuff. I, I kind of wing it a lot. Uh, I've got a lot of, I graph out some wreaths, but some wreaths, I just kind of go with the flow. You know, I have fun going with the flow and this is going to be one of those. I like the pink and yellow in this sign with a little bit of green. So I think that's the color combo we're going to go with, with a little bit of blue to bring in the gnome. There's my thought process. Uh, 
I don't have a lot of red, white, and blue, and I want to do some more patriotics. So I am going to be kind of careful of that because I want to bring in some more um, patriotic colors, but I don't have a lot of colors left. So I'm going to be playing a little bit with that but when you put your colors down not a lot are you gonna you know you won't use a lot of big bulky stuff all in one shot one wreath make only want one sign and not a little gnome below it or, or whatever so pay attention to what your instinct is telling you and follow your gut you know that's my biggest um this is a work what i call a working tub uh, i've started putting colors that i'm going to use in tubs so that i can move them more freely uh, as you can see the red white and blues aren't in that but they're going to be in just a second i'm moving them uh, but organize your katcha organize your space so that you're not having to do what i'm doing you don't want to always be Fussing with it, you want to be able to move slowly from one pro or steadily from one project to the other without having to stop in the middle, especially if you don't have a lot of time to do your projects because maybe your family needs you to get dinner on. You know, that kind of thing has to be thought of too. Now, I was looking at some bigger flowers that I had set out. But I think, and you do these with your customer in mind, but if you don't have a customer in mind, do them so that you like what you're doing. If you like what you're doing and you're putting it out for sale, somebody else will like it too. Not everybody's going to buy your stuff. Not everybody's going to come and say it's great. Some people might sneer, but they don't have to buy it if they don't like it don't put your hopes that you're going to sell everything you make just have fun and the rest will take care of itself See? and this would be too much in my mind so this one's going to go but now if i took the wagon wheel wreath form let me find another one i got a milk crate literally full now see, I could take this wreath form, same pattern wreath form down here, and take this little guy and put him in the center. And then go out from there and make him the focal piece of the wreath. That's gonna be pretty. So that's what we're gonna do. But right now I gotta focus on the wreath form making. I always have a ton of ideas and I go from one project to the other pretty quick. You may not be like that, and that's fine. You don't have to be like that. We're gonna go with some little bit of a bunch of colors here. Uh, we may not put much purple in because I want to, uh, I wanna kind of mimic the sign. So we may not do much blue or purple. We're probably gonna stick with pinks, yellows, and greens. I take all kinds of things apart for centerpieces like this. This was twined together with some, ug I considered it ugly, burlap. So I took it off the burlap ribbons and it's USA and three little stars. So I'll put that on something else because I do want to do some more patriotic stuff. But don't be afraid to take things apart. Find your own inner muse, so to speak. Find your own wow factor I did not and I do have my flowers uh, kind of grouped together in color form uh, white and blue share a crate uh, purple and black are sharing a crate that way I can at least keep some colors together uh, I think some yellows are in the pinks butterflies that would be there, kind of a tropical, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere, get it? That's what we're going for. We're gonna make a tropical island 
woo-ha. I don't know what to call it. Uh, but always pull out a little greenery because even with fake flowers, your fake flowers are going to have greenery in it. And it's going to look kind of funny to the, and, and they won't be able to, some people will not be able to put their finger on it. But that just doesn't look quite right to them. And they can't figure out why. And maybe it's because we're used to seeing flowers with, you know, stems and leaves and, and stuff like that. So don't forget your greenery. You're going to need that. And even if you're trying to do a monochromatic theme, uh, monochromatic meaning, kids, what's it mean? Look it up, Google it, dictionary. What's it mean? It means a one color theme, right? Good job. Uh, like that, bring your kids in on this. Help them learn words like monochromatic. Help them learn concepts of color. Uh, help them learn and develop their own creativity as well. Because they do something you don't like doesn't mean they don't like it or someone else. So don't go, oh, don't put that there. Or, oh, don't do that. Nobody's going to like that. If they want to make something and see if it sells, be sure they know. Hold on. Be sure they know that... Um, it may not sell. Not everybody's going to like it. But it's a good way to teach them concepts of money management. Uh, managing their resources. This is all great for them to learn that kind of stuff. Now you're seeing me pull back some of this yellow and orange. There's a reason. I've got another wreath uh, centerpiece. It's a sun with sunglasses on. And I'm using some of the yellow orange for that. So I'm pulling that back because I want to use that for that particular wreath. So I'm kind of keeping that back. But, you know, you can bring your kids into this type of stuff. They will love it. Even the kids that may not like to get their hands dirty, let them wear some plastic gloves. But let them learn about concepts of color if they're young. If they're older, they can learn about other things like how much is this going to cost us to make? How much can we charge if we made this with so many, so much money cost us blank amount to make? How much could we charge for this? And help them learn, just like a lemonade stand helps them learn that. Help them learn concepts of money management and stuff like that. It's not always going to be something taught in school and it's okay it's okay to teach that stuff at home help them develop their own creativity and don't say no to their creativity because something they create may save the future you don't know and if you nurture that creativity into a direction that they can use later on even better that's my opinion. My opinion's not everybody else's opinion. And heaven's sakes, don't lose your drink. When you put your stuff around, make sure you have something to drink, especially if you don't have anyone that's going to bug you. I would love to start teaching art classes uh, and teach this stuff so that kids could learn those concepts because I've had to learn them and I'm still having to learn them. I've got friends that, that help me figure out, I'm learning how to use the computer to make spreadsheets of what colors are selling. Uh, you know, to help if I actually want to turn this into a business. But it's also helping me learn those computer concepts. How do I do a spreadsheet for, for my business of doing this how much did the ingredients cost me maybe one spreadsheet how much am i selling them for what colors and shapes of wreath forms are selling this year more than others because i've got hearts i've got the wagon wheels i've got circles i've got squares i've got crosses and i've got awareness ribbon shapes uh if someone 
asks for something. I had a lady ask for a specific thing. I had to tell her I couldn't do it. She wanted something with the St. Louis Cardinals involved in it, and she wanted a big multiple wreath spread. And honestly, could I do it? Yes, but it would have cost her way too much. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not. I want to do this for fun and for my customers to have something cheap that they might like or might give them, in this case, a laugh or whatever my goal is. I'm not doing it for the almighty dollar. So I was honest with her and I told her, I'm sorry. I can do a basic wreath, but I can't do what you want because it's gonna cost me too, way too much and therefore I would have to charge you way too much because I would have to special order things and, and I don't wanna do that. And I lost that sale, but that's fine. It's not about the money. Is the money good? Yeah, could I use it toward my service dog or, or the down on a house that I'm saving for? Yeah, but my integrity is important. And school can teach basics, but parents are the first ones to teach morals or aunties or teachers because they learn by watching us. I don't have any kids, but I'm watched. My complex has grandkids that come. When I set out a booth or put a Facebook post up, my great nephews might see that Facebook post. Or my nieces, they're adults now, but I still wanna be a good role model. And to me, a good role model's not gonna waste their clients' money and time. That's just an idea. Speaking of ideas, you saw me clear, he, he kind of, the things out. Okay, I wanna pull some of this small stuff out first. Normally, I tell you what, that's right. I tell you to get your uh, big stuff placed first. However, we're not doing that today. Remember that black zip tie? We're gonna cover that first. Now, I'm experiment. Whoops! I'm experimenting. I'm putting things over it, but not gluing it down because I want to see what what will look right. Just because I'm hiding something doesn't mean you just plop something on there. You gotta make things gotta make some type of sense. See what I'm saying? And I've got a vine here that will cover the black part of the zip tie. But I think the pink looks better than the yellow because there's so much yellow in this sign. And there's less pink even though the pink is brighter with sparkles and stuff. And if you're wondering what happened here, yes, I have a black eye. I had someone ask me on my other video. No, no one hit me. I had tofu one night. I made a tofu stir fry. I made a mistake. I ate it. The mistake comes in because I am allergic to soy and medicines, but I thought I could eat tofu. I can't. Apparently, I was checking the thermostat and the windows, locking the door, you know, the whole thing before bed. And I, next thing I know, I'm hitting the, the kitchen floor. Bang, you know, just wall. Wall up to myself right there. Hit right there. And my glasses, my other glasses, uh, shoved into my eye from what the doctors say. And the optometrist, he said he knew I was going to destroy those glasses. That he could fix them, no big deal. He'll probably have them fixed in a week or so. He's going to send them off. Going to cost me a little bit, but he said he could either bend them and pray they stay or send them off and know that they'll stay. Well, I'd rather know they're going to stay. Uh, but that kind of seizure only happens very rarely. It's only happened to me twice in two years. So that's what happened. That's why it happened. I, I, we think it's because of my allergy to the soy uh, in the tofu. 
I wanted to try tofu and my body apparently doesn't like it. Apparently I can't eat very much soy either because I react badly to soy sauce. So Tanya wasn't thinking and whacked my own eye. That happens. Now, sometimes you want to mix your flour things. Because, see, I was talking to you and I used the wrong one. But it still looks good. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off a few of these little yellow. Or, not yellow. Listen to me. Pink flowers. And glue them into place. When you're sourcing your crafting supplies. Source them also from places like yard sales. I love getting some of my supplies from yard sales. As a source, it really works for me. I got a big box of Christmas decorations last year for two bucks. I mean, big box. It was sitting on my handlebars. It was so big. Uh, we got some really funny looks coming home. Because I was sitting on a bag. I had a box on my handlebars. The back basket of my scooter was full. And I only spent $5. Because I told them what I was going to do with the items. And they said, take it. And it was a whole big box. A, a bag of fake flowers. A box of fake flowers. Uh, boxes of stuff like, um, like this cute little thing that I could use, you know, stuff like that. And so source your stuff locally. And now we've hidden the zip tie. You may not like it, but I kind of think it's cute. Now, you can start this any way you want. Depending on the wreath form you're using, I'm gonna put some small flowers on the spokes and leave my bigger flowers for the outside rim. And I will put the lights on the outside rim only, and I'm gonna use colored lights, I think. I really like these colored lights I've got. This is not sponsored in any way, but hey, if somebody wants to send me something, get me these. Uh, my wish list from YouTube, or for Amazon, is actually public. If you want a link, let me know, but here's, what I've been buying and I've got the white version over there too but this is going to be what I'm going to use I was using the Dollar Tree lights and you can do that okay they will work fine but their box is bigger because it's AA batteries and I needed I wanted this is another thing you can teach your kids when you're doing something like this need versus want okay i want more flipped flowers i want something specific for a certain wreath maybe but do i need it how much stuff do i have in my craft supplies that i can use up first and that can go with cooking too if you're cooking bring your kids in and teach them fractions Put a one-third cup in front of them and tell them, I need two and a half, two and a third cups of milk or whatever. And make them figure it out. And then they get to eat their results. Help them learn how to do dishes. Learn how to, this stuff is, you know, time with you. Yeah, they're learning something, but they're spending time with their most important role models. So there's some ideas. You can use a lot of math when you're cooking or when you're crafting. You can also help them learn concepts of color, of shape, of uh, what colors go together. As a legally blind person, I still have to ask sometimes, um, does this match? Because I have trouble with colors and patterns. You can teach them how to use the supplies they've got versus buying something when they don't have a lot of money. You can teach the older kids 
how to market a product, how to make a product versus how much a person charges for a product. So not only can they do this if they need money when they're older, but they can also go in the store and go, this is a better buy. And not only will they thank you for those lessons down the road, they're going to be building memories with you. That's the most important thing. My mom was a single mom, worked a lot, even after she was married to my stepfather. We didn't get to spend a lot of quality time together, but we did do things together, like going to the movies. That's something my whole family enjoys because that was how we were able to spend a little time together or watching TV together and even shows like Star Trek, mom would talk to us about uh, the the episode and I remember the old series there was a, a drugged flowers or something and mom used that to talk to us about drugs and why they were bad and what to do if someone approached us like they had on TV and bring things like drugs and even sex and stuff into our everyday lives so that we knew we didn't have to have sex just because some guy said, you know, something nice to us or whatever. Is it easy to talk like that to your kids? Heck no. Is it easy to find time? No. Today's world's busy, but there's ways to do it if you want. Okay, I'm done lecturing. And if you've seen my videos before, you know I lecture. I love this little rose. I just don't know where we're gonna use him. So we're gonna to toss him over to the side. Don't toss him into paint. Keep your craft separate. Unlike me, I sometimes can't. I did that yesterday. I had a little white, the, the rose was white and I wanted to keep it white. I did that, I wasn't looking and it landed in gold paint. I still used it, it turned out rather interesting, but um, well, as it wasn't intentional, you see. In fact, I'll show you a trick. You probably would pick up on this yourself. But if you're using the zip ties and you still have those little holes, take one of these little bitty flowers or something like it, this little bitty, and stick it in the hole to cover the hole. You might have to cut your stem down, which if I do that, I will have to cut the stem down because it's too thick but you can do that. And yes, I talk a lot. Now, see, I got this and it's a cute flower and it's got the green in it, but it's a little big right now. So I'm gonna put that to the side and work with smaller things and get the top done. Uh, I think because the sign is so large at the top, I knew that was gonna happen. I'm gonna use small things to fill in the top so it doesn't over, the sign is my main focus and the little Nomi. I want this one to be fun and funny. You know, someone's gonna see it and laugh. And do I drink? No, but, and do I have the same sense of humor everybody else does? No, but if we were all the same, it'd be pretty boring world. So I'm going to, and sometimes you're gonna to have to trim your flower to fit your space. Don't put your glue down first and then trim your flower like me, unless you can move kind of fast. Get off. And you will glue things to yourself. Your kids will glue things to themselves. I'm hoping when, uh, some of these foster places are get get going like Hope Ranch that I told you about that maybe I can help uh, do, develop like an art program for the kids or something like that. I'm passionate about art. I didn't used to be and I started doing it only and I wasn't really interested when I started doing it. Honestly, I wasn't. I could care less about art. I knew nothing about art. I was doing it because I needed physical therapy for my hands. Uh, my dexterity is bad, and if I don't use my hands and keep the physical therapy up, I'm going to lose what ability I've got. 
This has got pink and yellow in it, so I think it'll go good up here. It's a little bigger, but not bad. So I put it on a downward um, post because this down part will support the flower. So it can still be a little wavy and not fall off the wreath. Think about that too. Think about your supports. But um, I had some darted art and I didn't really care about it. I had no idea what I was doing. I couldn't, I literally could not draw a straight line with a ruler. Um, and I was terrified of everybody in the art group. I am good at making people think I'm a very outgoing person. I'm not. I can be very shy. I can be very withdrawn. I can get very uh, fixated on things, which is part of the autism-like symptoms that I tend to display. Uh, and so I was pretty much terrified and sat near the door uh, the first several group meetings and uh, I did this I had this notebook that had a picture of bunny rabbit on it and um, so I tried to draw that and it was terrible and uh, they came down to the table where I was at the ladies in the art group one of which was actually a teacher from my third grade so I was comfortable because I knew her with her coming and approaching me and um, they exclaimed over my bunny rabbit. In fact, I still have that bunny rabbit. I'm here to tell you, it was terrible. And uh, they even admit later that, yeah, it was kind of terrible. But they made me feel like such a part of the group and so comfortable but I still didn't get near them. It took almost a year and a half for me to get up, move slowly up to where they were sitting so that I was comfortable enough. And now they're my friends and I really miss the art group. It's no longer functioning right now. We're not still not getting together because of COVID, but also because the owner of the gallery is in her eighties and finding it hard to, to do a whole bunch of stuff right now. Uh, because they have rental properties they're trying to sell off and stuff like that because it's just getting to be too much. So, you know, I'm hoping that they're wanting to start art, do some art here where I live. So I put toward the manager a question of maybe a weekly art group and I would like to be involved in helping start that. Uh, my managers sent, uh, they send out a newsletter, the you create your flowers too, by the way. You don't have to stick with flowers that uh, are created for you. Cut, see how I'm cutting things up and I'll show you the flower I'm creating in a sec. But um, anyway, I told them I'd love to be involved in that. They're having a barbecue this summer for all the residents here. Uh, we have a local nursing center that brings us a meal once a month free if we sign up and a little gift so you know it's kind of nice there now this flower right here it has yellow in the back a little bit of green and then i put some stamens and stems and stuff in the center you know pollen so i created that flower you don't always have to stick with just with what you got but it's some small stuff around the, the top so it doesn't get too big now I can put some bigger things around the outside so I'm going to place my bigger flowers around the perimeter and then do the smaller stuff in the center and see maybe if I can fill it in if I need to fill it in with something like a pine cone or I wish I had little coconuts that would be great but I don't you know we'll just see what happens so let's get our border Put your glue down on a wreath form like this that's wire. If you can move fast enough, you can put your glue directly on the wire and then just place your flower and hold it for a few seconds. Like this. And I tend to wrap some of these petals that are falling around the base. Just wrap them around the, the uh, back side of the form. Just like that. 
now it'll stay because you don't want it to you want it to look cute not gaudy see what i'm saying does that make sense now i'm actually going to keep this aside because we could take this and slip it a little bit behind there we go the gnome and glue it through like that to kind of give it color behind the gnome. So that's probably what that's going to be for. So let's put that to the side. Um, let's find a, a yellow and do pink, yellow, pink, yellow, maybe, and then throw some of these greens in, cut them apart and put them in last. So let's, let's try that pattern. So here's a yellow rose. It's kind of craggly looking, so that's fine. I'm going to put some leaves on it though so i'm gonna put a little glue on the stem and you've got to move fast on this and i've taken the the plastic piece out of the leaves i want a darker leaf with a lighter flower so i'm just going to create that put the glue down like that and then hold and there you've got your choice of flower with green because like i said they may not know what they're missing when they look at your wreath but if you don't add a little greenery, the human mind is, that's cute, but something's wrong with it. You know, uh, cause we're used to seeing flowers with greenery. Now what I'm doing is I'm moving into the petals of the previous flower and I'm placing the stem on the, on the metal inside the, the petals of the previous flower. You see that? So that hides and then I'm just going to close it around it so it holds it. And that will hide the, the flower's stem and still, now fluff the leaves a little bit using some of the glue that's still there, you know, because of that. And just burn yourself. Don't burn yourself. Don't burn yourself. Just kind of arrange things, okay? And now I'm going to take a little hot glue and I'm going to put it directly under this yellow flower because he's wobbly still. And so it's gonna be gluing down the leaf because that's what's there and then put a little on the leaf to glue one of the outside yellow petals. That will stabilize that flower a little bit once it dries. Okay, and I'm gonna go around the wreath like that with that technique. Now, if you bigger flower needs more stabilization, go on the spokes. That's why I like this wreath form. I have more places to glue bigger flowers so that they stabilize. Now, repeat the pattern. We want something pink, but you don't have to go with the same specific flower unless you want to. If you want to, go for it. That's your, it's your baby, but I'm not going to. Uh, again, I'm going to create. Now, every single thing doesn't need green on it. I'm just doing this to show you what different leaves are going to look like with different flowers. I want you to see and get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm putting a little extra glue right there so that when I fold that leaf over and hold it, see how the glue's coming through? That's going to hold that leaf on. Looks natu more natural now, doesn't it? And if you want dew drops on your roses, you don't have to spend extra for dew drops on roses. Put a little drop of hot glue on it. It'll look like a dew drop. Don't spend the extra money for the roses with the dew drops on them because all they did was put hot glue over some kind of variety of hot glue on it. Now I went under the petal of the previous flower just like before. And I'm going to secure this one just like we did before. Secure the leaf and then secure the rose on top. And be very careful because you're going to burn yourself if you're not careful. But this is how it works. So you're hiding the stem of the next flower in the previous flower. And then you're securing it so it doesn't move. See? And we're going to do that all the way around. Don't worry. We'll find something to visit with while we do it. Now, if you want to leave some of the, 
Thank you so much. Thank you for telling us it's one o'clock. We're grateful. My bird clock. What can I say? I'm in a mood today. Um, I'm trying to show you these techniques, but you can take these techniques and change them. Make them your own. If something doesn't work the way I do it, do it your own way. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I won't even know about it. But I have to do some things differently than most people because, number one, I'm legally blind. I do some of this by touch. I can see, especially colors, really well, uh, shapes. I can't explain to you exactly how I see because I don't know what you see. So to me, this is perfect vision because this is all I've ever had. But I find ways to get around, like when I was in high school, my friends would go before me if I hadn't been down a flight of stairs before and count the stairs. They still do it. Uh, so that I know how many stairs in case I'm not seeing my depth perception might be off that day or something. Uh, so they still do that, you know. But, um, so something I do may not look right to you. Okay, find your own way. It's all right to do that. Do that in life too. You don't have to do exactly what your parents do or your grandparents or, or whatever. Just because your dad's a doctor doesn't mean you want to be a doctor. Maybe you want to be uh, a research scientist. Maybe you want to be an archaeologist. I wanted to be an archaeologist so bad. Uh, you know, or a flight attendant. My mom wanted to be a flight attendant. Uh, mom loves to travel. I think that's where that came in. But, you know, it wasn't in the cards for her. But it doesn't mean you have to limit yourself. Do someone says, well, my kid was born disabled. Point. I'm waiting for the point. Just because your child or friend or someone you know is disabled doesn't mean they can't. They only can't if they think they can't. Then you stop yourself cold. One thing my mom's always taught me, if you think you could, if you think you want to do something, we'll find a way. I wanted to drive. I may not drive a car like you guys, but I drive. I have to follow the rules of the road for a slow moving vehicle because my motor, my motorized scooter is considered a slow moving vehicle. I don't drive like you drive. And my air conditioning works a little better considering it's not enclosed. But still, you know, don't limit yourself. Don't limit your children. That's one of the worst things you can do in my book. And that's the truth, you know. I, I, I think that that really hurts a child if you limit them and you tell them they can't. Challenge them. Challenge yourself. If you tell yourself enough times, I'm afraid of heights, then you're going to be afraid of heights. Or I'm afraid of spiders. Then you're afraid of spiders because you create that reality in your head. Tell yourself, I don't know how I'm going to buy that great big house, but I'm going to live there one day. You drive by someplace, I'm going to live there one day. Guess what? I did it here. I used to drive by here on Archer's Walks. And wasn't happy where I was living because I'm too much like my mother and we tend to fight. Not physical, but we argue with words and that can hurt each other. Plus, I wanted to live on my own. I wanted to be an independent, rent-paying person. I wanted, I was, you know, wanted to be independent. It took me a little longer to get there, but... I wanted a place on my own and God knew that you don't believe in God okay fine spirit Krishna whoever I used to sit 
move a goat scooter by here and I would actually throw some of Archer's uh, dog poop bags in the trash and I'd sit there in the parking lot and look at these places and go, man, I want a place of my own. You know, I like that apartment because it's got a big yard talking about the end apartment where I wound up. And I wound up here. Maybe it was God. Maybe you don't believe in God. I think it was. My friends and I call it a God thing. But if you don't believe in that, that's fine. Now I'm going to change the pattern a little because I'm at the bottom. So I'm going to take these two and put them together like that and then glue that down. You know. But if you stop yourself, then you're never going to know what you can achieve. And if you've watched enough of my videos, you know I always talk like this. You've probably heard me say it a million times. But maybe you need to hear it a million times. Maybe I need to hear it. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's for me. Maybe it's for someone who's listening to this video just because you've got it playing and they have no choice. Uh, but the thing is, it's the truth. I don't care who you are or what you believe in. If you don't believe in yourself, no one's going to do it for you. That didn't work. See, if one pattern doesn't work, don't get mad. Just, if, if you're losing your temper with your project, put it aside, do something else for a minute. That's why my office is always in the same room as my craft stuff so that my computer's there so that if my craft stuff starts to annoy me or my office my you know learning the computer starts to annoy me because i'm still not too sure about how to do an excel spreadsheet and all that stuff but i want to learn it uh, i've been playing with it trying to learn it i can switch back and forth because i also know that i lose my uh stream of thought a lot now see, I have to put this one because it's heavier over here. That's fine. We'll find something to balance the gap and make it look better. So first, get the, these flowers, they have a lot of petals. You're going to have trouble sometimes with the petals wanting to glue down because you're moving around the flower. So just be aware of that. And if you have the bicycle wreath, use your advantage of gluing your uh, flower down in multiple spots. Even if you have a regular circle wreath, use that advantage. Glue your flower down in more than one spot or your sign or your little gnome or whatever. Uh, make uh, even your lights. Just, it doesn't hurt to have things a little more secure instead of a little less. See what I'm saying? I'll show you in a minute. We're almost done with the ring out. That's like with the outside ring. And then I'll pick it up and show you. Be careful. If you are painting or doing anything that may have fumes. Uh, I haven't said this before, but when I'm painting and I, I just thought about it because I've got some uh, ceramics that have clear coat on them. So I've got a window open. Be sure to vent uh, if you're doing anything with fumes. Be sure you're venting and you've got some clean air coming in so that you're not, because some of that stuff can burn your nose. And I've forgotten to mention that before. But if you're using anything, paint or, you know, even cooking and stuff, be sure you're venting properly and you've got clean air uh, so that you don't. Now, sometimes you're going to glue something down and it's just not going to look right. Yeah, it's okay. Pull it off. Let the glue dry and then pickle it off. No big. Or if you're quick enough, put something else in its place. Um... But as I was saying, see, I lose my train of thought. But make sure you've got clean air, you're venting, you don't want to uh, hurt your nose, your, your lungs. Uh, I have asthma, so I know that, you know, you got to be careful with your breathing. 
and especially after having COVID, I have less lung function now than I did before. They're hoping that we can get it back up to where it was, but uh, good old Uncle COVID, he wasn't nice to a lot of people. Or whatever, you know, asthma's no fun. Nothing to play with. So be sure that you're venting your space. Be sure you have enough light that you can see what you're doing so you don't accidentally hurt yourself. Despite how crowded my table is and how it looks, I have adequate space for not only me, but two or three others if they wanted to come here and, and learn. But that's, I've got windows right in front of me for light and for ventilation. Uh, I've got plenty of space for everybody to spread out. That's, that's all important. The more people you crowd, the, the more someone can get hurt with overspray, they could burn their lungs. Just be careful. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying be careful when, what you're doing. And I haven't really said that before, so I really want to kind of say that. Now, when you're doing a, a thing right next to these signs that you put on there, like this five o'clock somewhere, sometimes you might want to slip the stem of the flower with hot glue on it up under the sign. Let me show you what and why. I have wanted to and I didn't get it done because I wasn't watching. Take the stem and put it under the sign with hot glue on it. Now I'm going to have to add a little more hot glue. But that can help you secure a flower if you don't have a, another way to do it. I don't know. I didn't do it on this one. But this one I did. See that that's the difference in the look. The the wire and stuff will hold the stem in place if you want to do it that way. So that's another way of doing it. I was thinking about us using this little butterfly right here. There's some palms or we can use it over here because I don't drink so I'd like to cover up the martini thing but it's part of the saying it's five o'clock somewhere. So we're gonna put this little flutter by. We're gonna put hot glue on the body. Now be careful, the body of this is plastic and some of the veins of the wings because we want it to, we don't want it to come through and melt the butterfly. Sometimes your hot glue, if you're not careful, can melt what you're trying to work with. And then where are you? And just push the body down and let the wings kind of fall onto the thing and, and go where it wants. So now we got the butterfly on there. I'll show you in a minute. I want to find a flower so we can put it on there. So maybe he looks like he's sitting on a flower. What about this flower that didn't work earlier? But it's still, it, it, in my view, that flower is just way too big. We got this little bitty one, but he's too small, I think. So I, what I'm doing is I'm going through and I want to find something that's just right. And I'm not finding what I'm wanting, so I'm kind of being a little picky. So I haven't found what I wanted, so we're going to continue to go around and we'll come back to that. Let me pick that up and show you what it looks like for right now. Now, you may be happy with that the way it is. But I want to put something right there. I don't know what. I should have put a flower down and then the butterfly. Too late. I already glued the butterfly down. I don't think I'd be able to do it. Ooh, that might work. I might be able to take some of these. And, okay, we'll, we'll work with that. Let's finish the outside. You can also, if you have, oh, what are they called? Those Christmas flowers. The red ones, you know what I'm talking about. They're everywhere. I've got red ones, white ones, pink ones. You can cut them apart and still use the leaf in something else that's not Christmas related if you have that. 
I need some more leaves. I'll be okay. Here's what I've done. See that plastic? What I did was I pulled this off and threw it away. And I have a tub full of leaves that have no plastic on them because I want to use them as I've showed you. I do kind of want to mimic our pattern that we've developed without meaning to develop a pattern from one side to the other. So I want this yellow rose, because there was a yellow rose on the other side, to have some leaves on it. Now, one side of the leaf is fine. The other side's kind of broken. We can fix that. Put a little glue on your yellow rose, on your rose, below the break on the rose itself, and then just push the part of the leaf that's broken to the, you know, glue it down, basically, glue it down. And there you go. Again, it's the little details that people aren't even going to realize they're noticing that might make them either buy your thing or not buy your thing or like it versus hate it. It's the little details that are make them going to think about what they're looking at, even if they don't realize they're doing it. That's why art is so popular, especially art that mimics life. I, it, at least that's my opinion, um, is that people notice the little details. You know the saying, it's the little things that get you. When you're doing your leaves, have a tub to put some of this stuff in, your extra flowers, your extra leaves, because some leaves are gonna be way too big or way too dark or whatever. And so you're gonna to wanna to keep them for a different project. And it's easier, in my opinion, if you keep them confined to an area like a tub you can get them at Walmart, Target, or, or just generally where else. Or you might even be able to find them at a flea market or yard sale. Tubs with lids are a dime a dozen. And just, you know, put them in a closet or whatever if you got any spare space at all. But keep, the, and then you're going to save money that way. At first, when you're first acquiring all your craft supplies, if you, especially if you want to start doing this on a more regular basis, you're going to be spending a little more money out than you have coming in at first because you're building up your supply. And I've glued myself, my, my wreath to the, there we go. That happens, that happens. Just be gentle when you're pulling it back up. And you're going to have to fix a little when you glue yourself down to whatever you're working on. Don't fret, don't fret. You can fix it. Um, but when you're first getting your supplies, don't, don't be, <gasps> if you're spending more than you expected. You know, even going to like the Dollar Tree or yard sales to get the flowers and whatever. Because um, you can take apart previous displays, wreaths, centerpieces. Don't be afraid to take that, buy that stuff and take it apart. Even if you have to trash some and keep some. Uh, but you're gonna obviously spend a little more when you first start gathering your supplies than you, than you expected. Ah, oh, now I've got, I've got an idea on our butterfly. Uh, let's finish the border and then we'll do, I need a yellow, that's the pattern's calling for a yellow and I wasn't sure which yellow to do or if I wanted to put leaves on it or not. Um, in fact, I'm still being picky. But if you get your supplies and if you tell people that that's what you want to do, if they have stuff, they might give it to you. Uh, at yard sales, especially. You know, if you tell them, hey, I'm a crafter and I, I craft with this kind of stuff, they might be, could I have a, could you sell the whole, you know, box? And you might have to throw away part of the box, but you might get a better price simply because they want to get, they might want to get rid of the stuff. That's how I get some of my especially Christmas stuff. Even 
Christmas lights. If you know how to repair them, a lot of your Christmas lights, you need to change a bulb or change a fuse, put together a light repair kit, with a, buy old or get old lights have some people give you old lights then if you can't repair them take the bulbs out and the little green seats and the fuses put them in boxes organized and keep them and you're going to be able to um put yourself a light repair kit together and eventually people will give you lights that all you gotta do is change the fuse or change one or two bulbs and they'll will throw them out and go get a new set just because they don't want to mess with it. That's all. People can be wasteful. But if you don't have a lot of money, but you want to have Christmas lights, you know, uh, that's one way to do it. That's how my best friend and I used to decorate our house. And we used to enter contests uh, where we lived in Sullivan, Missouri every, every year. Uh, for the outside of the house, we would enter a decorating contest and they had the prizes were, were for um, What they called chamber bucks and they were for store credit For in town and and for three years we got third place the first year because we didn't have much We got second place the second year and first place the third year and it was mostly all because it was given to us or we found them at yard sales and we repaired them or you know and, and we used a cute way of, of putting them up outside we used our imagination we created a scene with a crash santa sleigh and sleigh santa was crashed into the chimney and a sleigh uh on the roof and then trailed packages that we actually created out of cardboard and old wrapping paper or and trailed old lights and trailed it down to an upside down Christmas tree, which was just a Christmas tree that uh, had basically fallen apart. So we took the parts and pieces and created an upside down Christmas tree complete with lights, which yours truly had to help twist tie the lights onto the tree because of the wind here in Missouri was uh, blowing it around and it would blow our, our ornaments off because we used plastic ornaments or, or the old uh, twine type stuff or the fiber, you know, the old stuff like that because that's what we got a hold of, you know, that's what we had. And we just added to it every year. Uh, one year someone gave us one of them light up igloos because she did not want to fix it. And that was the only reason she didn't want to fix it. So she gave it to us, we fixed it, and put it in our display for the, you know, on the third year. You know, and, and you can get neat stuff like that and just use your imagination. People can be wasteful, I'm sorry you say, but you can make use of that. And your kids can, you know, tell them to Google how to fix that. How do you, how do you change a light bulb in a Christmas light set? Instead of doing it for them, tell them to Google it. Help me figure this out. <laughs> Don't do that. You know, I mean, my mom and stepfather and my grandfather would do that, even though we didn't have Google back then. Uh, they would tell us, help me figure out how to do this, even though they knew how to do it. And then they would be like, uh, okay, what if we did this? Or what if we did that? Here, now, some people might want to leave it like this and just add the lights. We might do that. I don't know yet. Uh, leave it in the comments. Would you leave it like this or would you add more flowers to the spokes? We're going to see. What I've got here is more of these little bitty flowers that I had turned pieces off. What we're going to do is trim some of this green off so that we don't see it. There's just a little too much of that there. And we're going to look for the pollen things I had. Where did I put them? I put them here. And I'm going to take two of them and clip them off down here. See where they're joined? I'm going to clip below that. 
Now again, I'm creating something. I, this is not a natural flower. This is me creating a flower. So what I'm going to do is I've got this little daisy that I like. So I'm going to glue it. I'm going to put all this together and make something for that butterfly to be sitting on. So the first thing I'm going to put down is the pink. I put some glue on the board and I'm going to glue this, the, this like this down on the board. All right. I like that. That's in place. Now, next step, I'm using my imagination. I'm creating this. I'm going to put this little daisy between the two pinks. So they're shining. The pinks are showing up behind the little daisy. Okay. Just like that. Now, I was going to add this little pollinator that I cut, which I can't find now. But I don't think we need to because of the center of the daisy. See? Whoa, see? Now the butterfly is sitting on a flower. Now, I'm beginning to think this is all we need other than lights. I gotta put lights. But let's see, do we need, do we wanna back this little gnome with some yellow or not? I think that's too much. Honestly, I think if I look at it, let's clear some space. Even if we did some little flowers out on the spokes with this pattern, it might be too much. And you see how I'm kind of picking it up and practicing it? That would, that, that's helping me figure out what I want to do. And to me, that's going to make it too too much too busy too busy uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna reach over and grab my lights now no matter what kind of lights you're using your lights are going to be wound up somehow because of packing and shipping and, and, and all that these particular ones see the end of the light you just start winding right there Okay, these are button sales off of Amazon. I showed you the package, not sponsored. You can get them anywhere. Um, you can also get them unlit, or unlit. You can also get them in white. Uh, those are on Amazon. I don't have a link. Uh, I'll see if I can find a link and put it down there. I don't know if I can or not. I don't know how to do that. I'll look and see what I can do when I'm posting the video. If I can get you a link to these lights. Uh, and there. Now you can start. Now be careful if you're using these lights. Because this is wire. Alright. Some of these fairy lights are not on plastic. But they're on wire. Which is actually good. Depending on how they're made these are made pretty well the wire stands up and doesn't snap easy you got to be careful of that there's such a thing as cheap and still well made and there's such a thing as just cheap that's why uh i'm switched between these lights and the lights from the dollar general depending on what i'm making some wreaths i like these little fairy lights better some wreaths i i don't i want the dollar tree lights because i want them to shine differently such as maybe a christmas wreath these are too delicate for that i would want a brighter light and if i used two or three sets of these then the cost for my customer is also increased uh this is something i'm, I'm still learning about is my cost versus my customers. I used to just use whatever I wanted, but my friends, Sean and Scott, have been helping me learn uh, about cost, my cost, because I would love to turn this, honestly, into a side business for myself. So, you know, they're helping me learn that. Will this ever be something that'll support me? Maybe not. But even if it helps support my crafting addiction, that's a good thing. Plus, it gives me, I live alone, with the exception of my boy. It gives me something to do. 
something to occupy my time. Now, when you do these lights, any battery operated lights, there's gonna have a battery compartment. Now with these, I don't have to pull a paper out, but some of these lights, I wanna show, you know I like to demonstrate. You have a slip of paper and what you gotta do, you don't have to unscrew the base, just use your fingernail and pop it up a little and then, yeah, sure. You just have to, the song playing is man eater. Well, this is a paper eater. Use your fingernail to get under there and pop it up uh, just a little bit. You're not trying to, and just pull that paper out. Now the paper's out, snap it back and it'll light. We are gonna use colored though, simply because I can. Again, I'm not making this for any particular person. This is just because I like it. So I'm putting glue on the side without the screws. I know that sounds logical, people, and I shouldn't have to say that kind of stuff, but I'm going to just to be safe. Do not mess yourself up. Now, with these lights, you have a gap between the base and the first of the fairy lights. See? So you're gonna have to figure that into your pattern. I like to glue down some of the excess so that I start the lights uh, at the beginning of the wheel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, don't, if you've got a cheaper wire, be careful doing this, you could snap the wire and then your lights won't work. But with this one, it's a good wire, so it's a good thick. So I'm going to put a dab of glue down, and I'm going to glue down part of this hoop here to get the excess wire out of my way, and so it doesn't disrupt the pattern I want to create. Uh, the zip ties are actually not as sturdy as I thought, so I sometimes use my scissors to help poke things into the glue. The good thing is you can just pull the dry glue off. Sometimes you gotta hold something down and then just put glue on top. All right, and then use your scissors or whatever and hold it down till that glue sets a little bit. And sometimes you can blow on it and it helps. Sometimes it doesn't. But this is, like I said, not just something for you. You know, this could be a family thing. Create your own wreath for your door. The kids can create their own wreaths for their bedroom doors. Or night lights for kids afraid of the dark. Uh, do you want to create a family wreath for the door? You can get the wooden little, I've got them, they're owls. And, have, and they're just wooden shapes. And you get like, they're for a dollar something you can get, or a couple dollars you can get a pack of 10 or 12. And have them pick the animal they want to represent them and paint their name on it, or paint the animal, and then put their name, sign it. You know, and then that goes on the family wreath. You can even make your own family crest to represent the family. That's a great idea for a blended family. Uh, to create something to help the blended family blend better, create your own, even if it's not a blended family, create your own family crest and then display it either on your front door or in your home and create it together as a group. Believe it or not, this is not my idea. I saw this on Super Nanny. They had a great big blended family and to help the family as a family activity, they created a family crust together. And I thought that's a great activity, even if you're not a blended family. Families need to go do things together. So you could create your own family crest and then they could create their own crest, personal crest that could be the, for their bedroom. Uh, do you have foster kids? Are you a foster parent or a grandparent? And you got kids staying with you only for a short time. 
let them create a crest of their own or, or something to identify their space. Uh, I had a friend when I was young who was in foster care and she told me one of the biggest upsets for her was that she felt like she didn't belong anywhere. Like nobody wanted her and, and you know, and that wasn't why she was in foster care, but she was very young and didn't understand. And she didn't feel like she had anything of her own. So maybe help them create, even if it's not a wreath, maybe it's just a painting with their initial, their first initial on it and, and uh, something they can either take when they go home or, or something that will stay, they could create two, one to take when they go home and something else to stay in your home that will be displayed kind of like a, a memory. Uh, they lived here, they were part of this life. I'll never forget you. And you could create a memory wall. My grandparents, education was important to them because they both didn't have a chance. My grandmother had a first grade education. My mom helped her learn how to read and write her own name. Um, mom would drop me and my sister off at church and, and take kids books and help my grandmother study her letters and stuff and um my grandfather he had a third grade education when his dad pulled him and his bro uh, one a couple of his brothers from school to work in the fields while the rest of their siblings got to go to school so what they did was when someone graduated high school you got your picture on the wall uh, a special wall in their home was uh, denoted for graduates of high school. And if you didn't graduate, you didn't get your picture on the wall. You would get your picture somewhere else in the house, but not that wall because that was for the graduates. And that really helped. I felt really proud when I'd see my cousins uh, get their picture on the wall. And, and that was something I wanted was um, my picture on that wall because I knew it meant something. It meant something to me. It meant something to my family and my grandparents. And they were proud of me when I was put on the wall and I was proud of me. And no matter if you're a foster parent, a grandparent, an auntie, not even a parent, I'm not a parent, but you can create that with any kids that are around you. You don't have to be their parent to help them learn. I'm appreciated. Even if it's something little, like making something like a wreath to show them I, I belong here and I'm not going to be forgotten. I think that was my friend's biggest thing, was she didn't want to be forgotten. Now, sometimes you're not going to be able to hide your wires. See my wire? Because I want that light right there, I can't hide the wire. But I can hide the wire. I'm sorry, I know I jump on different topics. I don't know why I don't like that little bud. Eh, it's just weird. So I'm gonna take, now you could take a flower like this that has a see-through quality and you can put that right there. So that light's still gonna come through, but that that covers part of my, my sign, my, what do you call it? Slogan, I'm sorry. I had a dumb moment. So um, take a few minutes and you know, it's, it's okay to take some time and uh, look at what you've got and see if you can find something or create something. Uh, this is a great time to ask a child, hey, what do you think we should do there? Because we got, you know, we got this wire we'd like to hide. And they may come up with something you never thought of, but you can also take the wire and put it to the edge of the, whoops, put it to the edge of the sign, especially if you've got wire, and just glue it right there. 
at the top, which is what I'm going to do. This is homemade. This is not going to last forever. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to have, uh, you know, quality that it's going to look like a Mot you know, Monet or, or something. Just use your imagination. So I'm taking this and I'm bending the stem backwards so that the flower just kind of sits there. I may not like it when I see it. I may like it. You never know. But I'm having trouble with the stem. Okay. So sometimes what you have to do is either pull this off or if you need it to hold your flower together, like I do, cut it off as close to the base as you can. Now I need that. So I'm going to leave that piece of glue because it's holding the wire. I'm going to put more glue right like that. A bigger spot before because I have a bigger surface area of the flower. Now the back just fell out, so I may have to glue the flower together, but I don't know yet. Yeah, the plastic thing that was holding my flower together fell out. So what I do, I'm going to put glue ouch, between the ouch, layers of the flower to hold it together. And I'm just going to glue behind the flower where it touches the board so that it sits on the edge of the boo. Boy, that's hot. One thing I'm learning by doing this on camera is how to stop myself from shouting when I glue myself on camera. And there, there's our wreath. There's what I'm using as the finished product. I'm actually going to leave the spokes. I think it's cute. Whether someone else thinks it's cute and likes it or not is not my, it's not my thing. You know, I don't care. I'm happy with it. Now I am maneuvering some lights because I want them to show. I don't want there to be a dark spot there. And that's the good thing with these lights. You can glue them into other places. You can just push them around. Even the Dollar Tree lights, you can move around so that you have um, lights where you want them. You can glue, like I, I said, that uh, you can just maneuver them around a little bit. And most people will kind of ignore the wires, you know. They know, logically, that's what you need for the lights. So, duh. They're going to pretty much ignore that. And just, you know, secure the lights where you want them. Take your time and don't, you know, have to rush. But it's never going to be, this isn't something you can buy in a store. And see, that flower fell off. So we can fix that because I want that flower there. Actually, yeah, I know. I actually like it better with that. Well, I do need the flower there. That's the flower I created. So I want my creation there. Little more glue, never hurt nobody. <gasps> uh, apparently it didn't hurt my skin either. <laughs> Rub your fingers together. You get glue on yourself, rub your fingers together. It's going to help you get the glue off quicker. So you get glue on yourself, rub, rub that area, and the glue will fall off. Okay? So there's our little wreath with our little Nomi in the center. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. So that's our video. I'm sorry it was so long. I will try to link these lights when I upload the video. I don't know if I'll be successful or not. What I will do, I know how to link my YouTube list, my wish list. So I might link that and then you can find it. If I can't link the lights themselves, I'll try. So I'll talk to you later. Happy crafting. Bye everybody.